All right, hello everyone and welcome to Explore the Mundelein Collection Online. Uh, I'm Emily Ryer and I'm the Director of the Women in Leadership Archives. Um, here is sort of a run of show for today. Um, so today I'm, re I'm recording from Piper Hall on Loyola University Chicago's campus. Uh, accordingly, I'd like to read our land acknowledgement statement. The Loyola University Chicago community acknowledges its location on the ancestral homelands of the Council of the Three Fires, the Ojibwa, Ottawa, and Potawatomi tribes, and a place of trade with other tribes, including the Ho-Chunk, Miami, Menominee, Sauk, and Meskwaki. We recognize that descendants of these and other North American tribes continue to live and work on this land with us. We recognize the tragic legacy of colonization, genocide, and oppression that still impacts the Native American lives today. As a Jesuit university, we affirm our commitment to issues of social responsibility and justice. We further recognize our responsibility to understand, teach, and respect the past and present realities of local Native Americans and their continued connection to this land. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, Mundelein College, since we'll be talking about its history uh, for this time together today. So here is a photo of the Mundelein College skyscraper taken in the 1940s. A little bit of background information. So Mundelein College was founded by the Sisters of Charity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, or BVMs, in response to a call by Court Cardinal George Mundelein for a Catholic women's college in Chicago. Construction on the skyscraper building began in 1929 and the college opened in 1930. For the next 60 years, Mundelein College offered its students a comprehensive Catholic liberal arts education. Mundelein College served as the last private Catholic women's college in Illinois until 1991 when it affiliated with neighboring Loyola University Chicago. So why Mundelein College? Why are we spending this time uh, and effort to digitize parts of the collection and make it available to others? So here's an excerpt from the grant that we wrote. Constructed mere days after the stock market crash of 1929, enrollment numbers for Mundelein College were beyond initial expectations, despite obvious hardships. This indomitable spirit, as well as a dedication to social justice would remain constants at this new college. The history of Mundelein College continues to intrigue alumni, genealogists, history buffs, and architectural historians alike. The Mundelein College collection documents many changes in women's education, Catholicism, and American culture over the years. So let's talk about the home institution of the Mundelein College archives, which is the Women in Leadership Archives. The Women in Leadership Archives, or WLA, was established in 1994. We have our origins with Mundelein College as we are the repository for the Mundelein uh, College collection. Uh, Piper Hall was once the Mundelein College Library, and today we are proud to be part of both the Gannon Center for Women in Leadership and University Libraries. We are part of uh, one of several archives that are on campus. Uh, the Women in Leadership Archives is uh, separate from the University Archives, which has its um, own home in the library building uh, and collects history related to Loyola University, Jesuitic, Jesuitica, and other areas of collecting focus. Uh, the Women in Leadership Archives has its own areas of collecting focus that we'll talk about in just a moment. So our collecting scope is to collect and make available permanently valuable records of women and women's organizations which document women's lives, roles, and contributions. Here you'll see our basement storage facilities, as well as our third floor reading room in Piper Hall. Our collections are open to all by appointment. Uh, you do not need to be, be affiliated with Mundelein College or Loyola to use our collections. We welcome researchers from all universities, as well as the general public, and we love working with teachers. Um, we are generally open by appointment Monday through Friday. We highly encourage that people contact us um, several days in advance of their visit so that we can best serve you. We have 11 different areas of collecting focus at the WLA. All of these areas have some kind of connection back to Mundelein College, and some are a little bit more obvious than others. In order to deposit records at the WLA, you do not have to be affiliated with Mundelein or Loyola as long as your collection can relate back to at least one of these areas, 
We'd love to talk to you. As an archives, we collect a wide variety of formats, including paper, audiovisual, photographs, three-dimensional objects, and electronic records. As mentioned previously, we collect both from individuals and from organizations. Here are just a few of the individuals that we have the collections of. And here are just a few of the organizations that we have the records of. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about the Illinois History Digital Imaging Grant and the Illinois Digital Archives. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar with the um, Illinois State Library, so the Illinois State Library and the Secretary of State um, sort of fall under the same umbrella. So the Secretary of State is also the Illinois State Librarian, which is why we often see funding opportunities uh, through that particular state office. So special thanks to the Secretary of State and the state of Illinois for all of their support um, in this wonderful grant project, both monetarily and through their tech support. So let's talk a little bit more about them. The Illinois Digital Archives is a repository for the digital collections of the Illinois State Library, as well as other libraries and cultural institutions in the state of Illinois. As you can imagine, they are mostly interested in documents and items that help tell the story of Illinois history. So Mundelein College is of course a wonderful fit for the Illinois Digital Archives. And what exactly is the Illinois History Digital Imaging Grant that we received? This wonderful program provides funding for eligible libraries to carry out projects involving the digitization and provision of web access to their important historical and cultural collections. Digital imaging grants support the creation of digital collections while expanding access to those collections via the Illinois Digital Archives. Accordingly, uh, we submitted a grant for something called the Mundelein at 90 project. Uh, in case you were sort of counting out the years with Mundelein, uh, Mundelein College recently celebrated its 90th anniversary, and we thought, why not keep that celebration going? So the aim of this grant was to digitize and provide online access through the Illinois Digital Archives to unique historical records previously only, avail only available in person at the Women in Leadership Archives. The duration of this grant was from 2021 uh, to 2023. This was an $84,000 grant that was given to us by the state. So again, thank you very much to the state of Illinois um, for supporting us in this way. Funds were spent on a digitization vendor uh, as well as student employment. Items digitized included photos, scrapbooks, publications, and more. Today, we'll be focusing just on the photos as that is currently what is available in the Illinois Digital Archives. More items will be available in the future. I'd like to take a moment to thank all of our student workers uh, who worked so diligently on this grant, including Karis, Isabel, Anthony, Anna, Caroline, Sam, UJ, Kaylee, Katie, and Brooke, and of course, uh, Caroline and Laura, uh, who are with us today. So I'm going to go ahead and switch gears. So if you'll bear with me for just one moment while I switch over um, from this presentation to the web browser, we can explore the IDA. So if you wanna follow along in a browser, here is the web address, idaillinois.org. So here we are on the Illinois Digital Archives homepage. Let's orient ourselves for just a few moments before we get into the actual Mundelein College collection itself. Here at the very top of the homepage, uh, we can see a little bit more information about it. So as previously discussed, uh, the Illinois Digital Archives uh, is a part of these two larger um, state departments. Here on the right-hand navigation, we have some more options uh, that sort of mirror what is here in the top navigation. So here we have some links out to helpful um, state of Illinois websites and also some ways to access the collections. Let's explore the search bar here for just a few moments. Now, unlike when you're in a collection itself, if you're here on the main homepage and you type in a search, that is going to search the entire Illinois Digital Archives, which contains over 130 collections and counting. So we'll do a search now, and then we'll do um, a more restricted search a little bit later to see what it looks like when we're just searching within the Mundelein collection. So for those of you who are unaware, uh, Sister Jean came to Loyola by Mundelein. She had quite a few different uh, titles at Mundelein, too many to list now, 
Um, but it's a pretty safe bet that we're going to have some photos related to her in the collection. So let's do a search for Sister Jean. Wow, so here we can see we have over 2,000 results just on Sister Jean, and that it's picking things from a variety of collections, not just Mundelein College. So again, here is what an overall search looks like. Let's say we just want to search the Mundelein College collection. I will then hit Advanced Search, and it brings us to this screen. Searching in the advanced search defaults to searching all collections, but we have some options to search some specific ones here. What you'll want to do is unclick select all collections and then show all. When you don't show all, it will just show the first several collections by alphabetical order. Next, you will need to scroll down. So we know that this is M for Mundelein. Click the collection that we want to search in, and then we keep scrolling down, and then we hit save. It's really important that you hit that save button because it will not let you enter anything else until you do. Next, we can finally enter our search term. So we'll once again type in Sister Jean, and here you can see we have some additional options about what fields and things like that. For now, we'll just say that we're going to search all of the fields. If we wanted to get a little bit more specific, you have some options to add some rows here. Uh, again, if you wanted to be able to search by a couple of different facets at the same time. You also have the option here at the bottom to ser search by a date or date range. You'll want to note the format that it's instructing you to use here. So here, here we have uh, four digits per year, or if you're doing year and month, what that looks like, and so on and so forth. As you'll see in a few moments with the Mundelein collection, um, we had to make some best guesses with regards to dates. Um, so you might have an easier time browsing rather than searching. And again, we'll show that in a few moments. But for right now, let's go back to our search for Sister Jean. So having added the search terms that I would like, I'm going to go ahead and hit search. It will take a few moments to load. And here we go. 26 records instead of over 2,000, which would have been quite difficult to go through. So here we can see everything is a part of the Mundelein College collection. So now that we've explored the advanced search a little bit, let's see how we can get to the Mundelein collection itself. So I'm going to go back to the Illinois Digital Archives homepage, and I can do that again by clicking the little logo here. So here we are back at the homepage. And there's two different ways that we can get to the collection. So we can hit by institution. And we know that the WLA is part of Loyola. So we will go to L for Loyola. Or if you really wanted to, you could scroll all the way down. But I'm going to hit L. And then we scroll down to Loyola University Women and Leadership Archives. Here you can see the collection. So we will hit browse to gain access to it. Easy enough. I'll show you the other way to access it. So we did it by institution. Now let's browse by collections. Again, we know that this is Mundelein. So we've gone to all collections and I can hit M for Mundelein. Or if I really wanted to, I could scroll all the way down. I'm going to click M. And then scrolling down for Mundelein. And once again, we hit browse. If that's too much clicking for you, which I totally understand, uh, we also have this direct, direct link to the collection. So if you type in what's in the search bar here already, this idaillinois.org slash digital slash collection slash Mundelein slash search, it will bring you here. If we just go to Mundelein, it will bring us to the following landing page where you can then hit browse. We have a couple of different ways that we can peruse the collection. What it's displaying now is the default. So let's play around with some of those settings that you can browse with. So you can see here that it has defaulted to list view. It is also um, defaulted to 50 results per page. So you could play around with that. So if you have a computer that is especially slow to load, you might find it easier to do 10 instead of 50. Um, 
or if that is not an issue for you, uh, you can go up to 200 items per page uh, and scroll through that way. The other way that you can uh, peruse the collection is through the grid view. So let's see what that looks like. So the grid view in comparison to the list view is what it sounds like. It's going to have less written information and the focus is more on the photo. Um, one interesting thing to note about the grid view that if you uh, play around with the number of images per page, it will not enlarge the images. So again, just an FYI for you. So let's go back to our default setting of the list view and see some other ways that we can sort the collection. So again, it defaults to title ascending. So that's just going to be alphabetical order. You can do title descending, which is going to be reverse alphabetical order, subject ascending, subject descending, description ascending, or description descending. So I recommend the title ascending for browsing um, for a couple of reasons. So let's kind of scroll down and something that you might notice about these pages, and here I'll bring it up to 100 so you can see it a little bit better, is that a lot of these titles are very similar. And that is because the titles reflect what physical folder uh, the photos came from. So these down here, for example, were all from a folder called astronomy. So if you are sort of browsing and you want to see things from a certain department or a certain event, that is going to be a much easier browsing experience for you to have it sorted by the title. So um, let's look at some of the other ways that we can navigate this screen. So again, we can scroll all the way down once we've done, once we're done looking at things. And we can go to the next page. So we have this option here. You can skip to our particular page. Uh, you can enter the page number if you know what it is. Uh, so let's look at a specific photo uh, and discover some of the metadata that is available there. So I will pick on one of the biology photos. OK, so each of the records for a photo uh, is going to look like this. So once you click on the photo or the record itself, you'll be brought, brought to this screen um, that has the photo and then some additional information about it. So let's explore what is going down here before we look at the image itself. So here you can see we have title is biology 1937. As mentioned before, all of the titles relate to a folder. Uh, this is meant to help aid you in the browsing process. If we're lucky, we have a year. Not all folders have a year on them. So here we've lucked out and we know that it's from 1937. The description is something that was written by one of our workers to just help describe uh, what you see in the screen. We have also chosen a couple of subjects that again are meant to help uh, aid some browsing and searching. The creator will always be Mundelein College as these were um, the official records and photographs uh, from Mundelein College. Publisher will also be us for this project. The date is the uh, date that the photo was taken, if we know. So again, this is a time that we lucked out and we knew uh, where the date was. The identifier refers to what we named the photograph when we scanned it in. So to kind of make sense of this, Mundelein College, Departments, Biology, and then that's just a unique number that we assigned out. This is something where if you're contacting us about a particular photo, because there are so many that are similarly named, if you have this identifier number, that's going to be really helpful for us um, in discussing the photo further. So type image, um, again, this could be something else if it was a printed uh, document or something like that. Format, black and white photograph. We also have color photographs. We have things like slides and negatives. Generally speaking, we have not done any photo editing to any of the photos. There is a very small percentage, I would say a fraction of a percentage of some images that we needed to do some photo editing to uh, because of some errors that were made in the developing process, not with the digitization process. Um, so we have some images that we have made edits to. If it is an image like that, 
it would be in one of these fields. So you would know that we did some photo editing to it. But generally speaking, we wanna make sure that you're getting as close to the original object as possible. Source, again, this is telling you exactly what folder it's from. Language, English. So some of these photos have writing on them and some do not, but all of the metadata is in English. So in general, uh, everything is in English unless we see another language present, uh, in which case we would use that language abbreviation. Rights, the right statement will be the same for every field or for every image, I should say. So again, this just gives you information on how to contact us in case you wanted to use this image for a publication or for other things. Time period, again, we got lucky with this one where we know it's from 1937. If we're unsure when a photo was taken, we might say something like circa 1950s. And if it says something like that, we might put the time period as the 1940s and the 1950s just to cover our bases. Uh, but for this one, because we know the year, it just says 1930s. Again, this kind of helps with searching and browsing. Transcription. So if anything is written on the back of a photograph, uh, we will transcribe it here. So you can see that this is where we got the information for the year um, and a little bit of more information about what is going on. Not all of the photos will have a transcription field because not all of the photos have writing on them. You will see that there are other photos in the collection that have even less information. Perhaps they don't have a year or similar to this one. Um, they have not identified the people in the photo. If you have any information regarding people, places, or other basic information that you'd like to relay to us, you are more than welcome to do so uh, at this address and we'd be more than happy to update the information. Geographic coverage um, is also one of the fields that we use for the Illinois Digital Archives. Um, so you will see that everything will say uh, Illinois in a specific place. This is an unusual example because most of what's in our collection is going to say Rogers Park because that's where, of course, uh, Mundelein's campus is located. Again, this helps with searching and browsing because if people are looking for Chicago history or in this case, Glencoe history, um, they're able to search for that specifically, or again, perhaps even Rogers Park history. Browse topics, those are determined uh, by the state of Illinois, and we picked the appropriate categories depending on the photo. So again, um, education you'll see in just about all of the photographs, but science and technology, well, that makes sense for biology, but you might see some other headings here depending on the photo. The date digital is exactly what it sounds like. That was the date that it was scanned. Digitization specifications, again, that's more of the technical details about the photo itself and how large it is. Repository will always be us. Uh, collection name, also a little bit self-explanatory and contributing institution, Loyola University Chicago. I won't get into the IFFF uh, information here. If you don't know what that is, that's okay. We won't get super techie. Um, and down here, there are just some uh, auto-generated uh, citations that the IDA has provided, which is really great. So let's see what else we can do with this screen. So we have the image itself. So as you can see, I can click to expand. And when that happens, I can expand even further and get into a full page view and toggle back. I can zoom in and I can zoom out. If I have zoomed in in some way, I can always, oops, um, if I've zoomed out in some way, I can zoom out. If I hit home, it's going to bring it back to the original size. And of course, uh, we can flip the photo around. We just exit out by hitting the X, or if you're in the full screen, you can also hit escape to exit if you so choose. Getting back to uh, this page, we have some other uh, options for how we can save things. So if you would like to download just the photo, there's this little drop down here. So this is talking about, um, I believe, how many pixels. So I would recommend always downloading um, the largest size because why not? Um, so when you download the largest size, you'll see that it will just um, go in your downloads folder. You'll see that there's this little number here, this uh, 1565. That is the same as this identifier here. So if you are looking for a way to um, save this exact page, this page information will always be the same for this photo. 
So you could, um, you know, favorite this link or save it how you want, and it will always bring you back here to this photo. So that's another way, again, to kind of keep track with the different photos that you're working with. Now, let's say that you didn't want to just save the photo. You wanted to save all of the information that goes along with it. What you do in that scenario is you would hit print. You'll see that whatever uh, printers you have set up, um, it will have here. So it will, you know, say save as PDF or whatever printers you have. And this is going to give you the whole entire record, everything that we just saw on the screen. Search this record. Let's explore that a little bit. This is perhaps less relevant for photos than other types of collections, um, but let's just see what happens. So I'm going to type in biology because I know I'll get some hits. So I'll hit search. And then you'll see uh, within the page itself, it's just highlighted that term. So again, that is something that is probably a little bit more relevant um, with some of our paper records rather than our photographic ones, um, but did want to mention that as a feature. Some other browsing that you browsing options that you have while you're in this field, uh, you can see that you can toggle back and forth between the other records. So again, if you don't want to be clicking back and forth between the different photos, you can just click one and then just keep going through photo by photo in that way. And again, it does sort of take a moment to load. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the main homepage. And here we are again. Um, as far as uh, other capabilities that you have here, um, just wanted to note that I'm not as familiar with the save all function, but did want to note again, whatever screen you are in, this link will always stay the same for this photo and so on and so forth. That is a great way to save different options. One other feature um, that I didn't quite point out is, um, again, it's always going to show you in this top navigation what collection you're browsing in. So here it's showing you browsing items in Mundelein College collection. So if you're doing a search and you're not sure um, if you did it in Mundelein or in the Illinois Digital Archives at large, this kind of tells you where you're uh, operating out of. So with that, let's try our search again in the search bar and see what happens when we're already in the Mundelein College collection. So again, here we are. I'm going to look for Sister Jean again. And lo and behold, because we're already in the Mundelein collection, it is only searching that one. Um, if you wanted to change that, you would have to go into advanced search just like we did before and hit um, search all collections. So I'm going to go back to the main screen. Um, I'm going to toggle back over to my presentation um, just to um, tell you a few other things before we move over to the Q&A. Um, if you are joining me live today or watching this presentation um, sometime before April 27th, um, I did want to note that we're doing a celebration of Mundelein College history, um, and we would love if you could attend. Uh, you can RSVP here uh, so we know how much food to order. <laughs> Uh, and lastly, here is our slide about uh, questions. So if you have any more questions about how to navigate the Illinois Digital Archives, if you have any comments for us, here is our general email address. You can learn more about the project itself here uh, at our website at uh, Mundelein at 90. Um, again, huge thank you to the state of Illinois for supporting this project. If you would like to see more projects like this in the future, um, I've included a bit.ly link to donate uh, and a little um, scan here, you can scan that with your phone uh, and you'll also be directed to our donations page. Uh, so thank you again so much.